with all kinds of crazy things because our minds, our spirits is not ready, it's not mature enough yet to deal with those things. Right? We do have spiritual power. Prayer is one of the biggest spiritual powers that we have because that's a direct linkage with us in the Most High through Yahweh Shah. Right? We do have different aspects of spiritual power when you examine them through the scriptures. But others, on the other level that we witness from some of the prophets, we don't have yet. Right? We're still building up to be more mature enough in the spirit to be able to handle that. So here's the devil asking say, uh, the, devil, the devil asking Yahweh Shah, pardon me, to go and turn this stone into bread. But Yahweh Shah is going to take that little carnal thing and make it even more spiritual. Right? Verse 4. And Yahweh Shah answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the Most High God. Right? So when you're looking at taking stones and making them bread just to try to eat for the carnal necessity, yeah, that's cool. But keep this in mind. This is what the scripture says. Right? That man shall live by every word that proceeds from out of the mouth of the Most High, and not just by carnal bread. Right? So he was given a scripture that's found in Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. Come, come. Right? You can read about this in Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. And this was good because a lot of people who are strictly Old Testament uh, look at the New Testament as something totally different. So we see here that Yahweh is still using the Old Testament, enforcing the Old Testament, and making it even well known to us that we still continue to do the things that were written in the Old Testament and live by them. Right? So this is Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, and I'm going to start at the second verse, I believe. So this is Deuteronomy 8 and 2. It says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy power led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou would keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with matter which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know. That he might make thee, Salak, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Right? So this was something that the Most High approved or used to prove Israel even in the wilderness for those 40 years. Right? He didn't even give them carnal food. He gave them heavenly food that came from the heavens. But his intent was to let Israel to know that we should obey his word and follow his commandment and his judgment and not live by carnal means not go by man's ways or man's own thinkings right so this is something that we had to try to understand and, and develop as we came through the wilderness now when you read history you find out that the almost the majority of everyone that came out of egypt that was in the wilderness of that generation that came out died except for two people which was joshua and caleb Right? So we see that those two men were able to do what we just read here in Deuteronomy the 8th chapter and the 3rd verse. Follow the word, the ways of the Most High. But the rest of the people, they didn't do it. So it was just their children that were able to enter into the land of Israel. And then the Most High had to prove them as well as to teach them new things as well. Okay? Also, go to the Apocrypha. Book of Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, 16th chapter. And the 26th verse. It was in the psalm in the 16th chapter, found in the Apocrypha, and the 26th verse. Uh, 
All right, and it reads, it says, That thy children, O Lord, whom thou lovest, might know that it is not the growing of fruits that nourisheth man, but that it is thy word that preserveth them that put their trust in thee. Right? So it's not the bread or the fruits or the food that we currently eat. It's the word of the Most High. Now, like we said earlier, that if you don't eat for maybe four or five days, if you're carnal, if you don't eat just water, bread, some kind of substance, you will die. That's what they have famine. That's what they was talking about what's going on over in the Horn of Africa, right? They're saying that they had that, you know, uh, uh, high cases of, what's the word I'm looking for, as far as for the epidemic that's going on over there, especially in the midst of what's going on now, that they're looking for aid, but of course, everybody's going through their own problems, right? Mm -hmm. But they're not getting enough resources to help feed the children and the people that's in that region. So what happened? They're dying of starvation, lack of carnal food. But now the Most High is like, okay, you know, I understand that, but keep this in mind. You can have carnal food, you can be eating well, but if you don't have the spiritual food, if you're not eating that, you're dead to me. It's spiritually dead to me, which will in turn cause you to be physically or carnally dead, and then you're worthless. So this is what the this is what the Most High's message is. You just can't live by that. You have to follow the word of the Most High. Can't pick and choose. Can't say I'm just going to do this little bit here. I'm going to do that little bit there. But everything else, now nah, I don't want to do that. No. The only time that applies is if we are in a situation where we can't execute or can't do the law as it is written due to circumstance but according to the scripture we're supposed to strive and try to the best of our ability to follow what's written in the most high's word that's when you're alive that's what the most high says is the breath of life that's what causes you to be alive that causes you to even understand what things you can currently eat to even have your body be well maintained okay so this is what this what this is what this temptation brought forth an understanding for us the readers now as far as for what our priority is. It's the spiritual food first and then the carnal food. All right? You say something? Get uh two link ups for. Huh. I just want to read Job Job 23 and 12. Once again, Job, 23rd chapter, 12th verse. Job 23 and 12, it reads, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. And the other verse I want to read was uh, 2nd Edges chapter 8 and verse 4. Second Edges chapter 8 and verse 4 reads So he answered I and said Swallow then down O my soul Understanding and devour Wisdom So another scripture is dealing with food for thought uh, Chapter 8 and verse 4 Everybody got those two scriptures? Job 23 12 Second Edges 84. Wow. We're going to go back to Luke, the fourth chapter. I'm going to pick up now in the fifth verse. Luke 4 and 5. And it says, And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. So here is the devil now taking Yahawashah and showing him a glimpse of all the power having been in control of all the kingdoms of the world. Right? So now here is the devil enticing or showing proposition in Christ, I can give you all this. I can give you all this what you see here. Guess what? Because it was delivered unto me. He didn't take it. He didn't win it in a war. It was given to him. 
So the question is, who delivered or gave it to Satan to be in control of power? The Most High. Right? This is the Most High. This, this is a heavy verse. I'm glad we're reading this because Satan is showing his hand right here. A lot of people don't, you know, don't, don't read this, this temptation closely to see what he's telling you here. Because we want to give Satan more power than what's due. Right. As far as him being equals with God, or like him and God duel with each other, is that mm -hmm. the third one? He's a servant himself. Right. People don't realize that. Right. And, and when you read, you know, the, the story that's in the book of Job, the first chapter, first, uh, uh, first, the first couple of chapters in Job, it aligns, it gives you the full perspective of the relationship between the Most High and Satan. Right? When you read that story, you understand what we read here even better. When you understand what you read in Job, this becomes more clear. Because it was the Most High at the sight of Satan, when you read the story, that propositioned Satan about Job. Satan didn't come to the Most High and say, well, let me get to Job. No. The Most High said, have you considered my servant Job? Right? And then the Most High put boundaries upon Satan, upon what he can do as it pertains to the temptation or the trials that he will inflict upon Job of what he could or couldn't do. If they were at odds, if they were so much at battle with each other, Satan wouldn't listen or follow what the Most High said. He wouldn't care to, to his boundaries or what sanctions he put down. But Satan followed them and then came back and was like, but you put this here, I can't do this. Take that away, Most High, and then I'll do such and such, and he'll do this to your face. And the Most High said, okay, Satan, but don't do this. And Satan didn't do that. Hmm. So that shows you that the Most High does have control and rule over Satan. And he's allowed Satan to rule in this wicked domain right now that we call Earth. Because it is his time to rule. It is not Yahweh's time to rule. When Yahweh comes back, then it's going to be all power is going to be given to Yahweh, and Satan is going to be pushed to the back burner. This is what Satan now, understanding his power, is trying to tempt Yahweh to give in to worshiping him or following that which is not right. Right? So I'm going to read it again. It says, And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Right? Remember, we read in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that there is no temptation that's not common to man. So right now, on a lower level, other lower than Yahweh, we also go through these same things. We are also provided opp uh, uh, opportunity to gain so much. You can gain all of this. That's what their proposition with in Hollywood, in collegiate affairs, and things of that nature, where they're paying millions and millions of dollars. Right? They're put up on a pedestal. They're made to be an idol. Right? <laughs> so they're shown all of this. You can gain, you can have all the cars, mansions, women, fame, power, all this that you want. But you just gotta succumb to this. So now here on a, another level, as far as for all the kingdoms of which your house child is gonna have anyway, Satan is propositioning him to take it, but it comes with a price. It comes with a cost. Right? What is that cost? Let's read on. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Right? Mm -hmm. So the stipulation is, you got to worship the devil, and you'll receive all. You'll have all. Right? So now when we understand the dynamics of, when we see people in society prosper, and attain and get certain things, it's at what cost did they do it? It's at what cost did they get it? A lot of times we look and, you know, show favor to some of these people because they have all of these things, but you don't know what they did to get it. So you should not admire and envy someone because of the things that they have. Real treasure comes in the spirit, it's in the heart. It's in your actions, in your deeds, what you do for the Most High Christ. So here it is, Satan is saying, Christ, I'd give you everything if you, if you worship me. Consider that when we go through our day-to-day -day lives. Because sometimes we're propositioned with things that, it may seem minimal, it may seem minute, but it comes with a cost that you may have given your spirit or your soul away. Or you have just fallen to temptation of Satan. Sometimes it's ignorant, sometimes